Pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be the next hockey video as we preview and also predict for tonight's games who's going to in each tilt, excuse me, as the games kick off at 7 o'clock. Now, 5.30 Eastern, they kick off at 7 Eastern. As the first game is the Colorado Avalanche versus the Montreal Canadiens, which obviously you would think I'm going to go full-blown Avalanche in this game with how the Canadians are playing. I'm wrong just because I'm... Jonas Johansson last season when coming over to the Avalanche looked like he was fitting well into that system. He had a nice little run there at the end there. But this season it's been struggles for him. And according to Rotowire, he's the one that was confirmed. So I feel like this game is actually going to be closer than expected and could at that point go either way. And Montreal is going to have the roar of their home crowd if it is a close game. So this is a game that I kind of put at a hold, which is basically a 50-50 Split just because Johansson, if he plays to how he played at the end run last year, which was actually really solid for him, and the best he's played in his NHL career, been solid in the AHL, um, then they'll be fine, and the Avalanche are going to roll through the Canadians like you would expect. But if Johansson's been a little leaky like he's been this year, and not as good as he's been last year when he went over to the Avalanche, then I think this game has a chance to really be a 3-2, 4-2 game because of an empty net goal. And then at that point, it can kind of go either way. So that's why this is a game that is not just pick full bore um, avalanche to me. Now, when it comes to the Blues versus Lightning, both have 12 wins, 12-7-3 Blues versus the 12-5-4 Tampa Bay Lightning, who are, of course, the back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champion. Um, in this game... It is a go to be Billy Huso confirmed against Andre Vasilevsky. Now, this is the reverse. If this was last season, um, you would say that you would definitely in this goaltender matchup, we're still gonna definitely a hundred percent favor Tampa Bay. Vasilevsky's the best goalie in the world, but you would put that well and beyond because Billy Huso was playing like one of the worst statistical backups last year, but that's because they were kind of grooming him in and letting him go through his flaws, which is not a bad strategy if it's a guy that can handle it, and obviously he could because his buddy Jordan Bennington, their boys, were in the goaltender room together. He got through his flaws last season, obviously worked his behind off in the offseason. He has a 176 and a 936 this year, so he's kicking butt. So if he plays well for the Blues and the Blues keep playing, obviously like they have all season, like one of the better teams in hockey, as well as their minor league system is playing like one of the better teams in the NHL. They're off right now due to COVID not coming back for a couple more days as we pray all those guys get well. But the Thunderbirds are great as well. Billy Huso, the 26-year-old, he's really coming into his own this year. Obviously, I still favor Tampa Bay because they have Andre Vasilevsky. But this is no slam dunk because Billy Huso is playing really well if the Blues keep playing the way they're going. This is a close game, but I would definitely favor Tampa Bay and predict Tampa Bay slightly by like a five percentile in that one um, to Tampa Bay. Where in Colorado's game, I would say just because of Colorado to like a 10 to 15 percentile, I would predict Colorado. But again, Johansson has to play more like he's played last season rather than how he's played most of this season. Um, <clears throat> next game, Buffalo Sabres. Against the Panthers. Uh, the Sabres have been a lot more competitive this year. I have to give them credit. Um, unfortunately, Dustin Tokarski, who's been playing really well, and Craig Anderson were both out now, so that ain't good. Um, you have Aaron Dell expected to be in, who's been a very good career minor league goaltender, unfortunately for him. He's a guy I've always loved in the AHL. I'm a, I'm a guy that covers the AHL for Flyers Nitty Gritty and does NHL stuff. I love both leagues, but a or NHL-wise, he hasn't always been the squeakiest clean guy. He's only had some runs. He's really struggling this year. Uh, four, five, seven, eight, six, two. Uh, this game's definitely predicted big time to the Florida Panthers. They're at home. Bob's back in full Bob form. They're going to win that game. Um, Chicago Blackhawks against Washington Capitals. It's going to be Flurry against Vanacek. Of course, uh, I do also love how their new coach is not burying a young kid in Dylan Strom, who's still trying to develop. He's on the top power play. He's a guy I always believe got mistreated a little bit when it came to his time in Arizona because they rushed him up because, yes, he's talented, but he had to work on his skating, and those guys that have to work on their skating, you got to give them time in the AHL, and they didn't do that. He had a couple good so solid seasons in Chicago. 
then got buried by Colleton, and then now he's getting chances again. And um, he was obviously banged up all of last season. Now that he's able to come back, be healthy, he has to work his way back, too. So you got to give him time. I love how he's giving him time on the top power play. I think that's going to really be able to help him and eventually get him traded because I don't think his best success is going to be in Chicago. I think it's going to be elsewhere that is better for him. But anyway, Flurry against Vanacek. I'm definitely leaning Capitals in this game. It's at home. Capitals are rolling. They won't have Connor Sheary back from or Mantha or Oshie. But they've been figuring out that Protus kid is an absolute gem to watch on the ice. Uh, he's massive. He uses his body well. Obviously, he got a lucky goal for his first, but your take, whatever the hell gets you your first goal. Daniel Sprong's having a heck of a season. Connor McMichael is a guy to watch. Um, he's a very talented player. Um, he has five assists already when it comes to this season. And he's a guy that's just going to continue to get better as time goes on. He already has eight points in the NHL season this year, so he's a guy to just continue to watch as he continues to develop, put a little radar eye on him. But I'm definitely leaning Washington in this game. Okay, this game we don't even have to go over. Carolina at home, anti Ranta against Anton Forsberg. Anton Forsberg, again, another guy that's been very successful in his AHL minor league career. D just blimps of success like Aaron Dell in his NHL career against anti Ranta who's been a obviously very solid backup is in his entire career, has been starting to bring up his numbers, 236-903. That's going to the Carolina Hurricanes, not just because of goaltending, because they're Carolina Hurricanes, and they're one of the best teams in hockey in all facets of the imagination. So that's going to the Hurricanes. They'll have Bear, though, D'Angelo out as well. So definitely got to look at that. And then, of course, Pesce and uh, Gardner. When it comes to the Sharks and Islanders, this is at home. The Islanders are returning. This is going to go to the Sharks, even though it's at home for the Islanders. I don't think they're going to get that home win again yet. Just because just your first game back, you're playing a Sharks team that's playing really well this year. And also, I mean, how about that goaltending by James Reimer this year? But also, if Aiden Hill can bring it back, and I think he is going to be a successful at least backup 1B level guy, this is the game to start it. Show yourself against the um, Islanders who are not going to be coming out, obviously, with their cleanest of skates because they're coming off of a layoff. That we're very glad to see their team back coming off of COVID. It's great to see them back and healthy and people coming back, continuing to come back off of the COVID list. But seeing some people, like I thought I saw a tweet that Anders Lee was at practice, so that's good to see. It's nice to see everybody coming back, and hopefully that continues to happen for the AHL teams as well, where the Bridgeport Islanders, I believe their first game is Sunday, where they had they were the only team that had the big bugaboo issue with COVID between the AHL and the NHL. Now, this game again, I'm going to go Sharks because the Islanders are in their first game back. Boston Bruins against Nashville Predators, UC Soros against Swayman. Uh, Soros is a goaltender I was wrong on him in terms of thinking he was not going to be the greatest of the greatest. He was going to be more of just a mix-in goaltender. Well, he's obviously shown differently as he was able to compete for the Vezina against Swayman. He's expected. Swayman's confirmed. This is in Nashville. Nashville doesn't have any injuries. Marshan's, of course, out with suspension. Uh, Blee is also out. He's not as big of a thing, but the forward core is uh, very uh, kind of lessened um, by Brad Morsham being out by a huge effect. I'm going to go with the Nashville Predators in this game. Uh, New Jersey Devils against Minnesota Wild. That's going to be the Minnesota Wild. They are at home. I think they're going to keep rolling. Rossi's out. Spurgeon's out. But they're going to keep rolling. And they're going to keep doing well. Uh, and then when it comes to... This is a tough game to pick. Was Lincoln's against Ottinger. Ottinger's one of my favorite young goaltenders in the league. Uh, Pirlo and I always talk about him, how he's the guy that I think eventually is going to be just they're going to run with, even though Holpe's back. He obviously was playing well early on. The injuries, also Anton Hedobin's off play, led to Ottinger being able to come back up. And he's balling again, and I think he's a guy that eventually just going to roll and use for the foreseeable. Uh, not at that point yet, but I'm going to go with Dallas at home. Because I really believe in Jake Godinger. He's rolling again, so I'll go with Dallas at home. Uh, Calgary against the Kings at home. Um, 
Calgary's missing Lemieux, obviously, with that stupid suspension he got for... Not, the suspension was obviously warranted, but he's an idiot for getting that suspension. You can't blame somebody. Um, and then Sean Walker's out. Onto Tosillo's out. Byfield and Akil Thomas fill out the rest of that injured list. And then King... Kin, ah, Kinvall, if I could speak. Tanner Parsons and Brett Ritchie are out for the Calgary Flames. I'm going Calgary in this game, even though it's at home for the Kings. The Calgary Flames have been cruising all season. Goudreau's back to the different breed level player that everyone knows he could be this season. Obviously, Elias Lindholm was kicking butt. Matthew Kachuk, that one goal he scored in front of the net this year when he just danked it through his legs. and went, That was absolutely nasty. Um, and he's an absolutely ridiculous player, unicorn type player. Uh, so, yeah, definitely going Flames. And that wraps it up. That's all the games for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this prediction video predicting the game for the December 2nd tilt. Hope you all have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Borek. A special thanks to the 170 that have subbed this far. Please continue subscribing if you enjoy the videos to keep us going and growing. And enjoy the rest of the great hockey season and have a fantastic weekend. Peace out, everybody.